switching to the much improved defense minus Ronnie Perkins. How does the uh, front look? Yeah, so so Mark, we, we, we're just going with the two deep, but that, as I've talked about, and as they played in the spring game, they're, they're going to go three, four deep, but just, you know, for the purposes of this conversation, we'll I'm laying down to a, to a to a two deep. So I've got Isaiah Thomas being the, the the best returning defensive lineman on the team, playing at the defensive end position. So he'll probably slide in and out a little bit <coughs> from a defensive end to a nose tackle um, position. So so he'll start there. Um, I'm sorry, defensive end to a defensive tackle pres- position. You know, perspective, I should say. So I got Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas there. Jalen Redman um, is a guy coming off. He did not play in the had a you know a potential death in the family, so he was not there at the spring game. So got I, Isaiah Thomas out, outside, Jalen Redman inside from a d- defensive tackle perspective. Look to see those kids flip flop a little bit from time to time, just to take advantage of a mis- mismatch. You know, the defensive tackle is kind of a 1A and 1B. Josh Ellison could very easily be there, could be the guy um, at, for, with the ones from a defensive tackle perspective. Had, he's had an outstanding spring, so both of those kids will certainly battle. It'll be a big it'll be a big battle between the two of those. And then at nose tackle, Perry on Winfrey um, ha- has put on some, you know, has put on some additional weight, has, has been, been told – you know, to me and, and things that I've heard that he's, you know, starting to get it a little bit. Certainly the athleticism and the strength and power was there, you know, last year, but, you know, had some, had some problems finishing off plays. And then Jordan Kelly also at the nose tackle position as a backup. He's another guy that's that's been raved about over the spring. And then, you know, look, primarily Isaiah Thomas did not play at all in the spring game. Reggie Grimes held that defensive end position, played really well. You know, he's he's a kid that's that's got a lot of improvement, a, a four star guy. And then once we look at kind of the rush end, so I so I put those in kind of the front four. The rush end is, is certainly a linebacker position at Oklahoma, but they're much more you know on the line of scrimmage than they are in the you know in the in the middle of the defense. So certainly Nick Benito is the guy who is. You know, one of the leading leading sackers on the team with Isaiah Thomas last year will be the guy. The Marcus Stripling moved over from the defensive end position to this rush linebacker position. Played really, really well in the spring game as well. Who is a guy that was really a question mark just in terms of, you know, his ability to move because he's always played kind of with a hand in the ground, you know, at, at the defensive end. And so moving to that rush linebacker was a little bit of an adjustment for him. But if the spring game was any indication, he's – adjusted very very well to that to that um, position movement yeah that uh, benito thomas uh combination uh averaged in uh totaled i should say 23 tackles for loss and 16 and a half sacks we got uh, jason ray on the line from last word on college football joins us on a regular basis breaking down the oklahoma sooners and he's got a two deep depth chart for us to get us all set up for august camp as we move on to the linebackers yeah, so I, I think Mark, looking at the Mike linebacker position, this will probably be, in, in really my opinion, Mark, the, one of the the best competitions that we see, not only all the way through the through the summer, but through the fall and even through the season itself. Right now, I have uh, David Aguebu just slightly above Deshaun White. Deshaun White was a starter for most of the year last year. They got about equal equal reps at that position. Aguebu towards the end of the year started getting a little bit more. A lot of a lot of the a lot of kids like him and then a lot of the coaches really, really rave about him, you know, potentially being the next great um, middle linebacker at the University of Oklahoma, kind of in the in the mold of a Kenneth Murray. So we'll see how that irons out. But as of right now, I would put Aguebu slightly over white. And at the wheel position I've got Brian Asamoah there. Didn't also didn't play in the in the spring game. Nothing to be worried about. It was just a I think it was just a holdout more than anything, and really just to get Caleb Kelly some, some snaps. And he looked good. He looked a little bit quicker than I would anticipate him looking. You know, coming off those two different ACL surgeries, but you know he's a kid that's probably going to pro- provide some depth. Don't unless there's some injuries, probably not going to get a starting spot in, in that defense. 
but I think he's a kid that's going to play some. And, you know, I think just a testament to him and, and, you know, what he's been able to do from a work ethic perspective, really to put himself back in position with those back-to-back ACL injuries to, uh, to, to be back in this defense. Yeah, Samoa led the team in tackles last year with 66, also had five and a half tackles for loss and two sacks. We've got Jason Ray on the line from Last Word on College Football, breaking down the Sooners for us, uh, setting us up with a two deep uh, look at uh, both sides of the football and the special teams heading to August camp. Please like the video, share the videos out on social media because uh, we know that uh, you guys enjoy our Oklahoma football discussion. So please uh, share the videos out there on social media. Check out Jason's work on Last Word on College Football as well. All right, on to the secondary. So I think Mark on this much improved defense. If if there's a if there's a position of maybe concern, it, it might be the secondary. They as good as they were last year, just in terms of an improvement perspective, they were uh, they were not great um, from a from a secondary perspective. They gave up, you know, they were 80, 82nd in the country against the pass. So I think this is a this is an area of the team that really needs some improvement and. If there's any indications in the spring game, I know you can't take a lot away from the spring game, but you know, looking looking at that from a first team defensive perspective, they were a lot better. I mean, that's you know that's evident by uh, Spencer Rattler only going six of fourteen. There just wasn't a lot of there was, was just wasn't a lot of guys to be open. So so I think when we look at a cornerback perspective, looking at the left side of the field, DJ Graham. Um, is certainly a guy who came on late last year, played in the Cotton Bowl, started in the Cotton Bowl in replace of Trey, ba- Trey Brown, who was setting out for, you know, preparing for the NFL draft. He's a guy that played really well in the spring game, very, very athletic, and a guy that Grinch has talked, just raves about his ability. Uh, Latrell McCutcheon, who's a true freshman out of Austin, played a lot in the spring game as well, really kind of started because Woody Washington was held out, you know, held his own. I think it's going to be a big summer for him to put a little bit of weight on his body. Um, he, he's a little, he's, he's tall about the, about six foot six one. So in the mold that Grinch really looks for, but you know, I think he's, he looked a little skinny. So putting some weight on him would, will, will be, will be big. Um, so, and then, you know, kind of jumping down at the other cornerback position, uh, Woody Washington is a guy that that I think will uh, will be there, you know, from a from a starting perspective. You know, I think one of the things that Grant said, he said, I'm not sure that Woody Washington wasn't the best cornerback in, in the league last year. So certainly there's a little bit of coach speak talking up his guy, but at the same time, he's he's a guy that, that played well towards the end of the season, had an interception against Texas, um, and then also had an interception, I believe, in the Cotton Bowl against Florida as, as well. If, if it wasn't the Cotton Bowl, it, it, was, it was the Big 12 championship game against Iowa State. But, you know, and from a depth perspective, I think, you know, this is one that I'll just kind of add here. So I got Josh Eaton as, as a backup. And then uh, Jaden Davis is another guy who, who who's not going to get left, um, you know, kind of left out. So I think Josh Eaton battling with, um, with Jaden Davis. But just from a coverage perspective, I liked – what I saw from Josh Eaton in the spring game. That's why I gave, why I gave him the the benefit of the doubt. Uh, then moving on to the safety at the strong safety position, Delarian Turner Yale is a guy who's played a lot, a two year starter for Oklahoma in, in the defensive backfield. And then Bryson Washington played a lot, has made a really good play against Austin Stogner in, in the end zone again in the spring game. So he'll he'll be there from a depth perspective. Um, and then looking at the free safety. This is a, this is a tough one. I think a lot of people watching this will, you know, maybe be a little bit surprised. Patrick Fields, a team captain last year, a, a a guy that has played a lot at Oklahoma. I think, you know, nothing against Patrick Fields. I think from an athleticism and from a speed perspective, and and just as a better overall player perspective, I think Key Lawrence is a guy who who will take that position. Certainly looked well. Certainly looked good in the spring game, and then. He's a guy that really what I've been told is if he turns it on, if he's ready to go each and every day, he could be one of the better ones in the defensive backfield. And then looking at the nickelback, really, again, very, very close. This could be one of those ors that you see in the depth chart, Jeremiah Cordell or Billy Bowman. Billy Bowman played really, really well in the spring game. I think he was one of the kids that, you know, a lot of people have talked about the last week of spring camp, the – 
you know, the proverbial light just started coming on for him. Was matched up against uh, Marvin Mims a lot in the spring game and really held, you know, held him in check a lot. So I think that was impressive looking at specifically with all the different things that Grinch asks his nickelback to do. Uh, so I so I got Cradell and Bowman are, are two guys that, you know, could um, potentially – potentially be there and then you know kind of another another guy to think about is justin harrington who's a guy could he kind of moved to the to the corner i think he's a little bit um not quite quick enough to be a corner so i i I would anticipate them probably moving him back to nickelback he's a guy that could be could enter into that conversation as well looking at the special teams for oklahoma as we continue our conversation with jason ray who's running down the two deep uh, as we head toward august camp so you can join jason again on last word on college football uh pretty strong in the kicking game in regards to hitting the field goals uh, gabe burkick at uh, 20 for 26 uh the punting average a little bit shy at 39.1 but both of those specialists are back yeah uh definitely so when you look at gabe burkick two years ago you know, he was perfect, perfect on extra points, perfect on field goals. So I think, you know, with him, he had nowhere to go, but down certainly had a good year. You know, one of the, uh, you know, kind of one of the things that he struggled with is he had a potential game winner against, um, against Texas in overtime. And it was a big time shank. So it, it, I think it kind of hurt his, you know, maybe his reputation and maybe his, you know, confidence a little bit. He got that back, you know, he, he hit, um, multiple 50 plus field goal field goals this past year um, at least two or three that I can recall so so yeah certainly a strong point of, of the team uh, Munshot, as you mentioned was a little bit below 40 40 yards per, per punt um, will be interesting to see if he can kind of get that average up I think you I think Oklahoma would like him to be more in the you know kind of the 41 42 uh, yard range certainly those stati- statistics can um, vary a little bit based on you know, field position and trying to, you know, to, to track those teams that within the inside the 10, inside the 20 uh, from a field position perspective. And then from a specialist perspective, I, I think that we, you still see Marvin Mims as a punt returner was, was really good in that capacity last year. You know, I think there's a, a lot of school of thoughts. A lot of, a lot of people don't, don't necessarily love having one of your best weapons on offense returning punts. But I think this is something that, Riley has shown that it's not not worried about that CD Lamb return punt. So it, I wouldn't be surprised. C- certainly, I would be surprised to see anyone besides Mims. And then, from a kick returner perspective, you got Mario Williams and Billy Bowman. Not often that you see that you would see two true freshmen returning kicks, but I think the explosiveness and the speed that both of those kids bring to the table is is just too much for, to keep them off the field. Uh, from a specialist perspective. Charleston Rambo ran back 10 of the 15 uh, kick returns for Oklahoma in 2020. Of course, Rambo's in Miami, so they're looking to replace that. And uh, as uh, Jason outlines, Mario Williams looks to be a prime candidate for that. Jason, we appreciate you going through all the work, uh, setting us up on a too deep roster. Uh, People always want to know, yeah, how things look as we head toward uh, August. And uh, it appears as though the secondary still has a number of spots up in the air in particular. And, of course, uh, the offensive line and a few spots along the defensive front seven. But uh, really, that secondary, it looks like uh, there are still spots up up for grabs. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of competition in, in the secondary. There's a, there's a lot of guys, um, specifically at the cornerback and the nickelback position, positions that you'll that you'll look you'll look at i think you know certainly you know certainly you got, you got dj graham and you got willie washington as the guy that's probably the leaders in the clubhouse at the cornerbacks cornerback positions but then you got to your point mark you got a lot of competition at nickelback in the, in the safety position so it'll be be interesting and exciting to see how oklahoma lines up come um september 3rd i believe jason thanks for stopping by we always appreciate it uh, you have a great weekend all right thanks mark you too